Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I have a video with a bit of a difference for you. Um, I'm going to be showing you how I made this which is my swap for when I go to the stamping up on stage convention on Saturday. The day that I publish this video will actually be the day after so I will have handed out all my swaps. The reason why I'm doing a video to show this one, because it does look like just an ordinary card, um, is that I've used my Stamparatus to make it. I have never been one for using a stamp positioner. I'm one of the few people who never bore to Misty, um, couldn't really understand, you know, what all the fuss was about. Um, anyway, stamping up brought theirs out and I was absolutely bowled over by it and this swap shows you exactly why I was bowled over by it. So I am going to show you, I'm going to give you some hints and tips up as we go along. Um, I'm going to start off, well, now let's see, I've got my camera so far out now, so if I put that up there you can still see it. I'm sorry about uh, the leg here. I don't know how to get my camcorder set up so that I'm not showing that bit but I'm sure you don't mind. So to start off with um, my Stamparatus. If you weren't fortunate enough to order one during the pre-order they will be available in the new annual catalogue which goes live on the 1st of June 2018. This is how I store mine. What makes stamping up uh, the Stamparatus so different from anything else that's on the market is that we have two plates to put our stamps on. And the first and most important thing that I have to tell you about the Stamparatus is on the bottom there are two magnets. I've only got one of mine here because my top bit, my top tip for you is when you receive yours, take one of the um, magnets and put it somewhere on a tin that's not going to be anywhere near this. If these two magnets come close to each other and they snap close, they will break. Also, they'll probably give your fingers a nasty pinch as well in the process. I don't think you need, or at least I haven't done a project that yet that needs two magnets. So mine's going to sit on my tin behind me until I do a project that I consider it needs two magnets. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, the first two tips um, about being cautious about the magnets and careful with the plates are both from Stamping Up and they are both mentioned in the Stamparators book that comes with your Stamparators. Um, but the second tip from Stamping Up is do not put your Stamparators away with both plates in the grooves. As you can see I'm not holding on to anything there and if you packed it away like that, that would break those and you don't want that. As you saw with mine, what I did with mine, this had a plastic bag wrapped over it. This was in a plastic bag and I placed it on there so that the bobbly bits were coming off the edge there. And then I put it in the bubble wrap bag and then I put it back in the box. Right, so if I put that there, when I'm working with my Stamparatus, I get myself two stamp sets and I place them underneath my plates like that so that when I'm inking on this, putting any pressure on it, that's nice and straight, it's flat. But for the sake of the video, what I'm doing is I've actually brought over two clear boxes so there's no distraction. 
Okay, so they're the tips that I've picked up so far going along. Oh, one other. Um, the nature of the beast means that the most difficult bit to get any stamping done is in that corner. I don't know the technicalities of it, um, but that's that. I have found using my photopolymer stamps, or at least this stamp set, whether it'll happen with all of them or not, I don't know, but certainly with this set, the black mat isn't quite high enough. So what I've done is I've slipped an old, it's not a stamping up one, it's just an old silicon mat that I had. Um, this one's quite a lot thicker than my stamping up mats. Um, but that is just the right thickness for me and now it will stamp beautifully. I know somebody who had some fun foam and she cut herself a piece that fits on there. Uh, this is seven inches by seven inches. Um, so she measured hers to fit in uh, with that. In fact, there's this is a, the workspace here is seven by seven. So this has got to be about eight by eight, I suppose. But there's another tip for you. Um, because that bit is the most difficult to actually work with, what I do is I always line my paper up there and there is by the edge of this groove here. You see that? So if I move my paper, I know it's got to go back into that position again. Having done 110 swaps, I haven't found a problem. With this doing it like this yet and I think I left my yes I left my magnet under there and what I have done is I don't think I've done it very well but I've wrapped a bit of washi tape around here and I've left a little bit of a handle on it so I've got something to pull to move it but for the time being that's just going to go under like that but no it's not because I want this down. Now the first one I do, because I'm using several stamps, um, I do a practice run so this whole sheet is a practice. The stamp set I'm using is called In the Trees and I'm going to start off by placing my tree where I want that. So this is the back of the stamp, that's the front, so with the front facing down I'm putting my tree where I want it on my piece of cardstock and that looks about right. So with my ma uh, plate in the first, um, what should we call that, uh, groove, it's not really a groove but we call it a groove, uh, with the mat in the first groove don't mess about like I just did, could you move it? Just bring that over and pick up the tree. Okay. And also, no, I can't do that yet. Right, so what I need to do now, so that I can place all the others in the right position, I need to ink this. So you may have seen my video where, I don't need that, where I showed how to make this ink spot storage. Okay, these here are available as ready inked spots, but these ones here are the ones that I've done myself. And I'm going to use Pepper Zaz and Basic Black. And Flirty Flamingo and Soft Suede. And I've got four colours, so I'm going to take four of these as well. I'll explain about those in a moment. In my video, I show you, give you all the measurements, how to make all this bit to fit in, so you've got room for these as well. And then, once it's all done, you store it upside down, so your ink pads are up that way. Um, in case you're wondering why that's got a black bottom, and the, all the others have got white, that one actually was a ready inked one, um, but I had problems with the lid, so I put one of my own lids on there. Right, the next thing I do is I get myself some scrap paper to put up here because sometimes my ink pads fall over 
and I'd much rather that the ink goes on scrap paper rather than my um, cutting mat underneath. Right, so I've done that. I'm going to do stamp one of them first. On the bottom of all of these I've got the soft part of a Velcro pad. This was one of our daubers and I took the sponge off the top and I've put the hooks of the Velcro dot on there so that that will fit on there. So I could take that and then I can ink up like that without getting myself all messed up. Okay, and then I've also got the name on the bottom here so that when I stand this down I can stand them like that and I can see what colour they are. Okay, so let's have one for soft suede as well. So I'm just going to do the tree trunk. Bring that over. That's fine. Now I want to put my hammock on there. I want my hammock to touch the tree and so that it touches the tree the other side as well. Let me bring this over so you can see the sort of positioning I've got. So with the hammock there it's a bit lower than I... is it a bit lower than what I've got here? Well it is now. <laughs> right okay so that's going to be okay there. Now I want my sentiment, which is that bit there. Just checking that I'm keeping all of this in the screen. So that's happy birthday. That's towards the bottom of the tree. And to make sure it's centered, it's about level with that bit there. Okay, where's my paper pier? piece? That's it. There we go, I think that looks about right. And my birds, I'm going to put up there. Now all of these stamps, I've got the back facing upwards and the actual stamp is on my paper. I want that to come in the middle here somewhere. There we go, that's fine. My squirrel, I can't do just yet because I need my tree there. So over and pick these up. Now this is one of the things I really love about the Stamparatus. I can have four stamps on one plate. I can ink them in different colours like black for the birds, soft suede, for the hammock and flirty flamingo for the sentiment. I've now started putting the name all the way round so that when it's standing up, if I put it down and it's not showing the right one, I'm in with a chance of being able to see it without turning it if it's round on at least two. Okay, don't worry about the fact that there's ink on the actual plate it won't transfer. Okay, so that's the birds, sentiment and the hammock. Okay, so that's done beautifully. I'm never quite happy with the way that comes out because it's quite a light colour. So I go back and just redo that one and it comes up a lot, lot darker. And then I want to do the tree again. So move this along four. So it's one, two, three, four. I'm going to call these spaces. Move it along four spaces. Um, now ink this up again. And, oops, soft suede. If you think you've come too high, like I think I did with the soft suede, just 
just go over that bit again. Right, so come over now with this. There we go. So my hammock's hanging from side to side. Now I need to get my squirrel, which is here. Now this is the only bit that I really struggle with, trying to get his feet touching the tree. Right. Come on, don't give me a hard time. Right, let's see if we've done that correctly. So we do soft suede. Oh, I don't think. No. I've only given him two feet. <laughs> there we go. And the feet are nicely on the tree as well. So that's good. Once you've done all this, if you wanted, you could actually go around and paint it all in. But mine are for swaps, and a swap is we're swapping ideas. Right, now I'm turning the plate around so that the tree is now on here. Putting that back in the first slot. Right, now I'm going to move the box along because as I put this down, I don't want it going onto my box. It would only get attached to it. Now I'm going to put the grass down here. This bit I didn't do on my swaps. Um, I thought about it, decided against it, and then once I'd done them, I wished I had have done it. But there you go. Right, where's my paper piercer? Just get this in position. This is the longest part of the job, but once you've done this, you can just go through and do as many as you like. If you're doing something like wedding invitations, party invitations, maybe even your Christmas cards, you want to do them all the same. I uh, don't need to do that, do I? I've done the squirrel. Pay attention. Right, grass. Done that one wrong, haven't I? Shouldn't be putting it on there. Let's put that back again. I should have brought the other plate down. I find it very difficult to talk and concentrate at the same time. Right, let's get my paper piercer back again. Right, let's try that again. That's better. Obviously I've made a bit of a splodge there, but never mind. It will be alright. Okay, so do the green down there. Looks lovely. Now move this along number four as well. So that's one, two, three, four. And then ink that again. And then we've done that tree as well. So how easy was that? And that's just the test one. In fact, look, I need to move that one, don't I? Let's move that over. This is why there's a test one. So I think that should be okay. It's going to be a bit lower, but then I just want to make sure it is actually... more in the centre and if I do it just on top I might not see it. So now you see why there's a test. Okay, so that's the real one. So that's close there. Mm, that looks about right. So I'm really happy with that. That's my test. I won't actually be using it for anything. 
might use that side. Um, so let's go for the real thing. So lining up with my line there, put my magnet in place. Right, I'm going to show you, you don't have to do it the way, the logical way, like the tree first, etc. Okay, I'm going to do that first because that's the one that's facing up. If I was doing 110 of them, this is how I would be doing it. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I would take that out, turn it around, put that back into number four, ink up the tree, and peppers as. didn't ink it too well right there I don't know if you can see it from where you are I know you're quite a long way away now this is good this is going to show you what happens if you just redo the bit that you're missing So it makes that bit come up dark, but obviously that stays as it was. So what I would do is, if I needed to do that bit again, I would automatically do all the way around. Now I'm trying to do it and leaving that bit that I did. See if I can get this to come the, the right colour. Just press down on the outsides and not in the middle. It's still not quite right, is it? Ah, that's right, that'll do. It's a swap. I'm swapping ideas. Right, so that one's done. Let's move this along back into the first slot. I think this is probably where the trunk meets the actual tree. That's um, the most difficult bit because I'm trying not to get brown leaves. There we go. Okay, I suppose I really ought to ink that again to try and make it look the same colour as the other one. That's better. Right, now for this one, I've got one, two, three, four stamps, three colours, the birds, flirty flamingo, whoops, now that, can you see that bit, hold on, look at the proper camera, uh, see if I can pull this down a bit, can you see where my ink pad fell over so that it's gone on my paper, so that's fine. Right, so soft suede. Uh, no, I wasn't doing that, was I? I was doing this. Right, so that's the hammock and the squirrel. I did the birds. Did I do the first flamingo? Yes, I did, didn't I? Okay, so that's those. So the birds, the squirrel, sentiment and the hammock and there we go not happy with the birds probably because I left it too long because this is um, our basic black archival and it does dry quicker than the other paints there we go a bit too heavy on that one but that's fine um, so there's that one so I'll do one more if I find a piece of paper yep piece of cardstock I'm actually using very vanilla here so let's do that again. So let's do the tree. Mm. 
and soft suede. Move it along one, two, three, four slots. Pair pizzazz. And soft suede. Now if we take that one out, put it back into the fourth slot, one, two, three, four, and then the grass, move it back into the beginning, and we've got my tree stuck onto that box, there we go, so let's put that like that. And now we do our three different colours here. We have black, flirty flamingo, soft suede. Birds, sentiment, squirrel and hammock. There we go. Right, I'm going to do this one a bit darker. So I'm just going to go over the happy birthday. And there we go. Isn't that super? I'm just so thrilled with this. I really, really highly, highly recommend it. Right, the other thing that I did on here was my fruit, because I thought my tree looked a bit drab, Although, having said that, now that I've um, put the grass on, I think that looks quite balanced. But I will show you what I did. I just took my Flirty Flamingo marker pen and I just drew some uh, fruit. It was pink, uh, apart from a pink grapefruit. Can't really think of one that's pink. No doubt, as soon as I finished the video, I think, oh yeah, I could have said. And there we go. Um, as I say, you could also finish up painting the tree trunks and also the um, squirrel if you wanted. In the stamp set called, um, I think it's sitting there or sitting here, there's a cat that's lounging um, on the ground. He would have been quite nice to sit in there but I would have had to have masked that um, which is the kind of thing I'm quite happy doing but not for 110 swaps. But there you go, so that's how I did that. Then that will just be mounted onto a piece of um, Flirty Flamingo cardstock because we, when we do swaps we do card fronts and then on the back of this I've got to put the list of ingredients so everybody knows what I've done. Tidying up, first of all I put my inks away. There you go, see? That's why I have um, paper. Shame I didn't have any down there, but there you go. There's that one. I have actually, this is my second take doing this video, so if I've repeated something or um, referred to something that I hadn't mentioned earlier, I don't know, um, please bear in mind that it's the second take and it's really very difficult to remember when you've said something, did you say it on the first video or the second one? Right, okay, so they can go back in there. My inks can come back in here. I have box number two ready because obviously I'm going to finish up needing that soon. But I'm really pleased with this. 
So close that and then store it upside down. Right, cleaning up, what I do is I take myself a baby wipe and then I just clean the stamps. obviously doesn't clean up very well because I was using the basic black archival ink and then clean this and then the grass clean that bit I did. So I thought I brought over a piece of kitchen towel to dry up nicely. And then put these away. As I say, the uh, stamper, not stamper magic, stamperators will be available when the new catalogue comes out on the 1st of June. And I also think it is very well priced as well. Um, the sterling price is £44. Right, so that's that. Finish with that. And that and then to put this away I do it exactly the same again let's take that one off pop it back in its bag bring the bag over for this one and close that down pop that one there got my knobbly bits at the end there hanging off the edge and let's put my magnet back and slide all that in. So there we go. Um, it's a brilliant investment and it's really well worth taking good care of it. And there we go. All put away. I think I've remembered to tell everything that I should tell on this um, tutorial. Let's throw that away. I don't want to keep that. Um, I will put in the box below the um, details of the stamp set that I've used and any other bits and pieces like the ink spots, what have you. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the box below and I will. Um, give you the answers. If I don't know the answers, I will find them out for you. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here today, apart from the Stamparatus, um, I'll give you the link to my 24-7 online stamping up shop in the box below. If you've enjoyed my tutorial and you'd like to be notified each time I upload a new one, please click on the subscribe button. And finally, many thanks for joining me today. Until next time. Happy crafting. Cheerio.